Then came another deportation. At this point, people that were working, even they, were divided. We all had to leave the apartment. My grandmother was evophile, was very sick, with double pneumonia at that point, high temperature. She couldn't get out of bed. She couldn't go. We left her in a locked apartment, not knowing what was going to happen with her. With another old senile lady, a Mrs. Heilman, who was the mother of my mother's best friend, who lived with us at that point, as well as some various members of our families, my father, my sister, my grandmother's sister, had two daughters, and that was all basically in two rooms kitchen with a bath, toilet, not bathroom, toilet outside on a landing. We all went out. We didn't know what was happening to them. It was a whole day. They started dividing left sidewalk, right sidewalk. My mother and I were put to the left. All of a sudden, my mother thought that most of the Jewish policemen were trying to get their families over to the right sidewalk. She didn't do anything. She just gave me one push and said, run. Don't look. That was it. She went over to somebody. She was in a fairly higher capacity in the netting factory. She started talking. She spoke beautiful German. She was a very presentable live woman. And they brought her over to the right side. They bunched us out to the factory where we spent the day working. We came in the evening home. We realized that they did not break down the door. Ours was one of the few apartments where they did not break down the door. And my grandmother was there. When I came back, I was the only one of my friends that came back to ghetto, and none of the others did. At that point, I heard the biggest, I think, argument between my father and my mother that I have ever, ever heard. My mother has got a temperament. She still is alive, thank God. And she has been quite a feisty lady all along. And she could not understand why my father was asked to become a Jewish policeman. And by that, probably been able to protect his family, or at least she hoped, would not undertake the job. And the only thing I, qu I heard, and that was because it was yelled at night, my father answered, they will lead me to death, but I won't lead anybody to death.